Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Chelsea, if you are new here, if you are not new, sup, thanks for coming back, appreciate you, love you. So last week, and I say last week, and by last week I mean like two days ago because I'm so impatient and excited about this new series, and I say series because it's basically just like what my channel is now, that I'm just gonna upload them all the time instead of like once a week. So last video, I posted about Bobby Joe Long, the Hillsborough County, Tampa Bay area um, serial killer that I slightly had a connection to. And that's definitely one of my favorites just because the backstory is crazy. So if you wanna go watch that, go do that or watch it next, whatever, don't mess with that retention. But today we are going to be talking about the OG, the true crime story that got me obsessed with true crime and just falling down all the rabbit holes when I was in middle school, and that is the nipple belt king of Wisconsin himself, Edward Theodore Gein. I don't know if his middle name's Theodore. I think it is. I'm so excited. The sadly impressive thing is, is that I basically know this entire story by heart, so I only had to look up like certain dates. I know, kind of weird, but it's fine. So buckle up, put on your nipple belt, get ready. I'm so excited. Let's play with makeup and let's go ahead and get into some true crime stories. Like, subscribe, all that. I love you, you love me. Okay, great, let's continue. Edward Gein was born August 27th, 1906 in Wisconsin. His father, George, was a pretty bad alcoholic. He loved to drink. And his mother, Augusta, was an obsessive, overbearing Christian. Ed and his older brother, Henry, weren't allowed to have any friends. And right after school, they had to come home and help with work on the farm that they lived on. So they lived in Plainfield, and they lived on, like, the outskirts of town, like, as far as you could be, like, outside of town while still being, like, inside of town technically because Augusta wanted to keep them away from outside influences. So after school they had to come straight home, do all their chores, do all the farm stuff, and then she would read to them from the Old Testament and she would basically teach them that all women are hussies and trollops and whores and that lust and carnal desire are evil. And also it said that their house was the only one in town without electricity. I don't know about y'all, but there is just something even creepier. Not only just like a weird looking farmhouse, like creepy looking farmhouse, but like a farmhouse without electricity, that's a million times worse. So like I said, Augusta didn't, didn't want them to make friends, but even if they were allowed to, it wasn't going to be easy for little Edward Gein because he had a, I keep wanting to say a saggy eye. It's not, that's not what I wrote down. A droopy eye and very effeminate behavior, apparently, or a demeanor rather. And then also he would like start laughing to himself randomly, which I've done that before, I'm not gonna lie. I've said something funny in my head and then I start laughing, but not like all the time. Apparently this was all the time. And then also he had like other displeasing or disturbing mannerisms as well. So he was bullied quite a lot. So even if he like was allowed to make friends, it wasn't gonna be easy for him. After Ed's father, George, died in 1940 of a heart attack, pretty sure it was due to alcoholism, but after he died in 1940, Henry and Ed had to help support the family, which if you do the math, they're well into their 30s by now. So they help support the family by doing odd jobs around town, um, you know, basically being, you know, a handyman, you know, doing errands for people, you know, ra random things here and there, you know, hauling things, basically anything their neighbors and people around town need done. Little Eddie, since he didn't really get along well with adults, he actually was a babysitter since he got along better with children. A 30-year-old, well, over 30-year-old, male nanny. I don't know who, people in this town are freaking weird. So there are really two, you know, different ways they could go about, you know, being exposed to everything. They could have a normal life, start realizing, you know, okay, this is crazy, or go the complete opposite. Guess which way Ed went? So Henry started telling Ed, you know, hey, I'm worried about, you know, your like weird, unhealthy attachment to Augusta. You know, it's not normal. 
and just, you know, is kind of bad mouthing Augusta around him. And Eddie didn't like that because, as we all know now, Edward was obsessed with his mother and absolutely was trying to do her. Not like outwardly, he just, he was very confused. Very, very confused. It's also, it's also kind of confusing too though because apparently she was like really mean to them and could like never, like they could never please her. So it's also confusing as to like, I don't know, I guess like any attention is good attention when you're like that screwed up and like that's the only person you're around. And again, it can go both ways. Like Henry was like, I gotta get the fuck out of here. And then Ed was like, I gotta get back up in there. In 1944, I guess Ed had really just had enough of his brother and really wanted his mom all to himself. So there was a fire like on the property of the farm, like on like the like edge of it basically. So he, him, Ed and Henry were putting out the fire and the fire department came. And when it was all, you know, finally put out, they came up to Ed and they were like, hey, we can't find Henry. Have you seen him? And he was like, no, allegedly. And, and they're like, all right, well, we got to go search the house to find him. And he's like, okay. So then he just led them straight to Henry's dead body. The ground around Henry was burnt, but then Henry wasn't burnt. So obviously that's a little bit suspicious and we all think so. I'm sure some of the townspeople thought so and I'm sure Ed's mother thought so. However, the coroner was like, all looks good here. Cause <laughs> of death, asphyxiation, moving right along. And now Ed had his mother all to himself didn't have anyone to judge him. It was just her and him. Well, plot twist, because that only lasted for a little bit less than a year because his mother actually was diagnosed with cancer a year after that. And then she suffered like multiple strokes and then she died. At her funeral, Ed was quoted saying that he had lost the his one true love, the love of his life, and that he is alone in the world. Okay, anyway, so obsessed with his mom, wants to do her, she dies, gross. Ed Gein is 39 years old, his father's dead, his brother's, well, he killed his brother, his brother's dead, R.I.P. Henry, and now his mother is dead. This is when all hell breaks loose. So around this same time, coincidentally, people in town start to go missing. I'm sure it's just completely unrelated. Now, Ed also boarded up every room in the home that his mother went into. So basically every room in the home, except he kept open the kitchen and then a small room next to the kitchen, I'm assuming with like a bathroom too. And keep in mind, his mother didn't want him reading anything or looking at anything other than the Bible. So once she was gone, he kind of went ham a little bit and started looking at just all of the porn and cannibal magazines or like cannibal books. I don't know if there's like cannibal magazines, but that's what that's what multiple websites and articles said. And I was like, what the fuck's a cannibal magazine? When, where do I get one? Not that I'm like looking into that, but like also that was just like crazy and fascinating. And I don't know why I keep like falling down those rabbit holes too. Back on track. Can you tell I've had two Moscow meals tonight at date night? Don't talk about it. It's fine. Anyways, so he also looked at that and then like death cult magazines. Again, don't know what the hell that is. And then these like detective magazines that also like had porn in them too. Just a lot of porn, a lot of weird stuff, a lot of killing, a lot of eating people and like solving crimes. So he was really just like living his best creepy life at this point. But also it gets way worse. God, can you just imagine? Augusta is rolling in her grave. So Ed was still supporting himself by being a handyman, just being so handy. And then also by just having a thriving small business as a, at this point, basically 40 year old male babysitter. One of his neighbors later on 
was actually quoted saying, he was always good with the kids and always did good things for me. He never hurt me. And now it's really important to note that this woman, this neighbor, Wilma Booth, she actually moved down the street from him into like a property that used to be her father's, I guess, or was her father's at that time. There were like conflicting statements on like different websites that I looked at, but she moved there because her husband went missing. Now, multiple people in the town went missing, like over 10 people went missing after his mother died. Now, it wasn't proven that he was associated with that, but it's a very small town. It was like a population of like 100 people. I'm exaggerating, but it's basically 100 people. And also, the thing that's crazy to me, again, I'm always all about red flags. Don't ignore those. Like, there's so many red flags in not only Bobby Joe Long's and all these other stories, and even Ed Gein's too. Like, there's so many red flags. It looks like communist China up in here. Like, it's insane. So people around town would, like, tell stories and, like, whisper about how he had, like, shrunken heads and, like they were like ritual pieces or something like that from like other countries and how he had like human heads in like his freezer and people just thought they were like part of a halloween costume and it's like why would you keep part of your halloween costume in your fridge and everyone just thought that it was like oh just kids making up stories kids will be kids you know you know that old story you used to make up and tell people about how someone showed you a severed head you know, that old gag. So no one took those stories seriously. If anyone tells me like a creepy ass story like that, I'm gonna take a little bit seriously. I'm gonna absolutely be like, hey sure, if you wanna like keep an, keep an eye on like crazy old Ed Gein over there, the guy who just had like his entire family basically die within four years. I don't know how many years it was. I'm not a doctor. The sad thing is I do know how many years it was. I just don't want to flip my page back and do the math because yes, whenever I do these videos, I basically write everything out in a notebook from like all of my sources. I'm basically just doing book reports on murderers. If I would have put this much time and effort into college, I would have, I would have like stayed in college. Probably not. <laughs> Who are we kidding? Who's got the time? Not me. So like I said, multiple people around town went missing. One of whom, that's not the correct usage of the word who, was Mary Hogan and she owned a tavern in town. And it's again reported that people were like, oh my god, yeah, like can't believe that Mary like went missing. Like what happened to her? Ed would make jokes like, oh she's not missing, she's in my barn. That's my Fargo accent. I don't know what just happened. And also like when asked like why certain people didn't like report certain like weird things he did, the whole like mindset is like, oh, I didn't want to be rude. I didn't want to cause a fuss. Well, first and foremost, fuck politeness, cause a fuss, you can save a life. That's our tagline, okay? So Mary Hogan went missing. No one had any idea what happened to her. Except her head. Now it wasn't until Bernice uh, Warden Wooden, Warden, something like that, went missing. That was like when people started taking like the creepy little like jokes that Ed was making seriously. Like I said, no one really took these like little stories or rumors or creepy little whispers around town seriously until Bernice Warden went missing. Pretty sure I'm pronouncing her last name wrong. And she was the owner of a hardware store and when police went in, the like only trace of her was a bloody puddle that like led outside. There was one thing missing from the store and that was a 22 caliber rifle that was like hanging up like behind the cash register basically. Guess who was the last person to buy something from her? Our good friend Eddie. Now obviously police were like, all right, we gotta, we gotta go ask crazy old Ed what all the hubbub's about. Instead of going into the house first, they go into this little, it's not like a, it's not like, like a full size barn. It's like a, so I don't know if y'all know much about like hunting, probably not, right? But a lot of times you'll have like a smaller barn or like little, 
I don't want to call it a hutch. Anyways, you'll have like this shed is basically what it is. It's um, an area where you, and I'll have like tools and stuff in it, where you will basically, oh, I did that too far, uh, where you will basically cut up what you, and like skin, like what you killed that day if you're hunting, right? So they went in there. Oh, that's a real um, not even. What they found was absolutely horrendous. Hey, so uh, this is a trigger warning. Also, my lips look real good up close like this. Anyways, my makeup doesn't, but um, we're about to talk about some real creepy shit, okay? So if you think you're gonna have nightmares by hearing about decapitation, mutilation, um, severed body parts, and just like real creepy stuff like that, I'm really sorry. You definitely keep on listening now. Just desensitize yourself, it's fine, it's fine. Was that even English? I don't know, anyways, keep going. What they saw was Bernice Warden's body, decapitated, and strung up like a deer, upside down. The blood was being drained out, and she had, I don't know how to say it, not post-mortem, but it, it, it was clear that she had been like mutilated like after she'd been killed. So after seeing that, they were like, oh, we gotta check the rest of the house. And so they did. And keep in mind, like 80% of the house basically is still like boarded off because he was only living in that small room next to the kitchen and basically like the kitchen area. Now the cops said that the house was covered in junk and rotting garbage and that just the smell was just so overwhelming. And all of these stories, it's all about the smell. Now, again, trigger warning, but I find this shit fascinating. So in his house, they found, I legit have a list, a full ass page long. Buckle up. They found bowls made of skulls. Obviously there's like not much you can make out of a skull, but he had like a full ass like dining set. He was ready to have his non-existent friends over. There were a pair of lips sewn onto a window, like drawstring pulley thing, like the thing you like pull down at an angle and like it's all crooked and like you try to like move up your shades, you know. He also had four severed noses, nine masks made of human skin, 10 female heads with the top sawed off, you know, just cuz. Skulls on his bedposts organs in the refrigerator and this is only like some of it this isn't even all of it he had mary hogan's head in a paper bag mary hogan don't know if you remember her but she was the tavern owner and then bernice's head in a burlap sack that was the hardware store owner he had a lampshade made of human faces he had nine vulvas in a box no i'm sorry you probably heard me wrong I didn't say nine Volvos. I'm not talking about cars here. Vulva, not your uvula, vulva. Nine vaginas, cuters, boxes, and a shoe box in his closet. I, I like to imagine that he like hid that one away. He's like, I'm gonna put this over here. Like n normal people have like their sex toys like in like a like a travel bag, like under their, you know, or in like a box or something, like under your bed or like under your dresser or like in your nightstand. A shoebox of vaginas. He also had leggings made out of skin and basically like a, a whole like skin suit, like a, like a body suit, I guess. A jumpsuit, a onesie. Let's just call it a onesie. Basically, I, had a, I wonder if I had a butt flap. He basically had a onesie made of like skin, like leggings. I don't know why they call them leggings. Why well, they just call them pants? <laughs> like I think they're like real tight. You just like shimmy them up. Um, so leggings made of skin and like basically just like a skin suit. So he also had like a pair of breasts like sewn onto a shirt and then like a corset made of skin and then like masks that he would wear too. And my personal absolute favorite he had a belt made of human nipples not only human but female nipples a belt you know to keep his his skin leggings up 
Now everything was photographed and immediately destroyed. <laughs> I would love to include pictures, but listen, I'm, I'm positive this video is going to get demonetized, but I'm pretty sure if I like included pictures, my just entire channel would be taken down. You with like this one specifically, if you would like to look up the pictures of that, you're more than welcome to, but I don't want to subject you to that. Now Ed told investigators that he visited three local graveyards about 40 times between the years of 1947 and 1952. Like how small are these graveyards? Like why are there so many in a town with the population of like four? Probably because Ed's killing all of them. That makes sense. He said that he would be looking for women who were heavier set and like middle-aged or like a little bit older, women who resembled his mom or like reminded him of his mom. I personally think that he wanted women who like were a little bit older and a little bit heavier set, mainly like the heavier set part, because he wanted to like have more skin to work with. Now after Augusta's death, said that he wanted to have a sex change and that's why he decided to create a woman suit so that he would be able to put that on and pretend to be female i don't know see that's why i'm fascinated by it sorry tangent but that's why i'm fascinated by like the backstory of all of this like why how not like why did they do all this obviously it's never gonna make sense but i want to know how they made sense of it no, there are a lot of articles, like basically every single piece of writing about Ed says that he's a necrophile, but when he was asked about that by investigators, if he did the do with any of the bodies that he dug up, or you know, just any dead bodies in general, like after he killed someone, his response was, no, they smelled too bad. But then again, like, Ed, your house smelled like shit too, so... Are you sure your like your standards of like I don't I don't really trust your standards of like smell, buddy? On November twenty first, nineteen seventy five, Ed was arraigned on one count of first degree murder, and he pled not guilty by reason of insanity. He was found mentally incompetent and wasn't fit to stand trial. Oh, that's way better. There we go. Ed was sent to the Central State Hospital for the Criminally Insane, which just like that name sounds so crazy. I love that. <laughs> I miss glitter eyelids. In 1968, his doctors determined he was sane enough to stand trial. So that was about 10 years after he was in the institution that he was in after he was like first tried in court for it. As someone who has hooded eyes, I love being able to do this because it just like makes me feel like my eyes are big. I'm not going to be able to get this off of me for like years. This looks so shitty now. In 1968, Gaines doctors determined that he was sane enough to stand trial. The trial began in November of 1968 and only lasted one week. He was found guilty, but since he was legally insane, those are quotation marks, he lived out the rest of his life in a mental institution. One of the higher ups at the hospital where he was was quoted saying, if more patients were like him, we wouldn't have any problems at all. However, many of the nurses said that they were very uncomfortable with the way that he would just stare at them. He did make some friends. He was actually eating. Like reporters were shot when they saw him about five years after, and he was, you know, significantly larger. So he was actually eating before he wasn't. He participated and seemed to really enjoy multiple different kinds of occupational therapy, like rug making, rock polishing, and he really enjoyed reading. Although he did, you know, make a few friends, have engaging conversation, but overall they say that he kept to himself. On July 26, 1984, Ed died of cancer, and then he was buried right next to his mother, just feet away from the graves that he had robbed years before. Now, what a lot of people don't realize, which I find is very fascinating, so many characters in books and film and TV shows, 
have been inspired by Ed Gein. For instance, the book Psycho, which was adapted into a movie, and also from that, Bates Motel, um, which all seasons of that are on Netflix. And if you have not watched it, I heavily suggest that you do. It is amazing. And I'm not just saying that because Sheriff Romero is so fine. Uh, so fine. You'll know what I'm talking about if you just watch it. And then probably I'd honestly say the most well-known character based off of it or movie that took inspiration from it was probably Silence of the Lambs and the character in, oh, I just got that everywhere. And the character in that movie who was um, a Buffalo Bill because it puts the lotion on its skin or else it gets the hose again. She was one of those big old fat ladies. I honestly feel like I haven't actually watched that movie all the way through. Maybe I have. I have to have. I'm gonna watch that tonight. And by tonight, I mean this morning because your girl's staying up all night because I don't have to work tomorrow. I try not to sympathize with all of these freaks, but also just like hearing the backstory as well. It's just like, oh, like you can't help but like feel bad for them. Obviously what he did was so horrible. And they did even get him to confess that the reason why he started killing was because he didn't like like how like gray and like not stretchy and just like like not like real the skin of like the dead person looked. And then he wanted more like he wanted fresh skin for his skin suits. Gross. Aren't we all just skin suits at the end of the day? So again, not sympathizing with these people but also like whatever they did later on like that doesn't like that doesn't make like their childhood or upbringing like suck any less you know if there's anyone who's just like just now coming to my channel and like watching just these videos and not like my makeup videos the this makeup look and like the last one that I did did not come out good, but that's not what the story's about. So I'm real sorry about it. All right, kids. So moral of the story is one, have electricity. Basically don't do anything that Augusta did. All right, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I am just gonna keep going. I'm just, I'm not gonna stop. I'm not gonna stop. It's so bad. So like I said, I hope you enjoyed. Please subscribe, like, comment. Um, I love being able to have conversations with people about true crime. Like I'm ridiculously obsessed with it, as you can tell. Be safe. Do not ignore red flags. Don't do it. And always be aware of your surroundings. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.